Hidden San Francisco, the guide to lost landscapes, unsung heroes, and radical histories. Stop E13, Carving Hills, the Richland Overpass over the Bernal Cut. San Francisco would not be a gridded, urbanized space without the remarkable efforts made to cut down, cut through, and flatten the dunes and hills that were here when urbanization began. One of the earliest dramatic examples of this process took place on Rincon Hill, when it was the richest neighborhood in the city, covered in elegant mansions, many of which belonged to Confederate sympathizers, such as Senator William Gwynne. It was an unlikely place to be ripped open. But John Middleton, a landowner on the southern flanks of the hill along 2nd Street, had his own ideas. Winning election to the state legislature in 1868, he was intent on fulfilling his main goal, to cut 2nd Street's grade down and make it more passable, and thus make his own land more commercially viable between the location of the city's commercial center and the shipyards and gas works near Steamboat Point at the end of 2nd Street. He successfully passed a state law authorizing the 2nd Street cut, and before long, crews of men and horses were digging into the hill and creating a deep east-west chasm, while Rincon Hill still rose up a hundred feet on either side. At first, a bridge was built across the divide on Harrison Street, but eventually, over decades, most of the hill was brought down in size. While the Second Street cut was underway, William Ralston and Asbury Harpending convinced the state legislature to authorize the leveling of the entirety of Rincon Hill. But the intransigent opposition of Governor Henry Haight stopped this plan from coming to pass, with the legislature eventually reversing itself. When the Bay Bridge anchorage was established on the remaining summit in 1936, the remainder of the hill was finally fully integrated into the urban grid. During the 1860s, Broadway was cut through the dense rock and steep slopes of Telegraph Hill. The eastern slopes of the hill were already being systematically quarried by several companies who were bringing down tons of rock and selling them to road builders and for ship ballast, among other uses. Broadway was open to make access to Clark's Point and the Vallejo Wharf from solid land. Just to its south was the Barbary Coast, then still largely built on old ships and piers jutting over the waters of Yerba Buena Cove, so the Broadway cut provided a road to move goods in horse-drawn wagons into the city directly. Two decades later, after the long bridge was built across the mouth of Mission Bay, today's 3rd Street, the railroad that used the bridge needed to create a way through the easternmost part of Potrero Hill, which is actually comprised of three different hills, this part known as Irish Hill. The steam paddies went to work and carved a route through the hill to connect the railroad to another long trestle crossing the wetlands of Islas Creek before reaching land at Hunter's Point. Today's dogpatch neighborhood sits astride the flattened land that was once a slope running up steeply from the shoreline and connecting to today's Potrero Hill. As recently as the 1930s, a big piece of Irish Hill still stood at the corner of 22nd and Illinois Streets, where it took 92 steps to reach the top on an old rickety stairway. The thousands of cubic yards of soil and rock from the original cutting of a passage through Irish Hill and later its general demolition all went to filling Mission Bay, the shipyards, and the Islas Creek Basin to the south. Today, a tiny remnant serpentine cliff of Irish Hill is still standing near 22nd and Illinois Streets amid the massive rebuilding and renovation of the Pier 70 shipyards. Driving in or out of San Francisco's Mission District on San Jose Avenue, one passes through the Bernal Cut. Originally, Bernal Heights was continuous with the hills to its west, today's Fairmount Heights and further Goldmine Hill and Diamond Heights. The Southern Pacific Railroad built its line through the low point in this small hill range in the 1860s for its San Jose-San Francisco line. When they first opened it up, and for many years after, it was only the width of one railroad track. But in the 1920s, the city decided to radically widen the passage and add automobile traffic. That's when the overpasses at Highland and Richland Avenues were built. At one point, this was projected to be the southern end of the proposed Mission Freeway, but actual plans to plow through Valencia and Guerrero streets with an elevated freeway were defeated by 1959, and San Jose Avenue has served as a high-speed car corridor ever since, until the addition of bike lanes and the J Church streetcar in the 21st century.